Wine is one of the oldest and most widely consumed drinks on the planet. But even so, it's still a bit of an enigma for lots of people. With supermarket aisles and wine lists that are pages and pages long, what to pick can be a real challenge. I'm gonna give you an overview of exactly how wine is made from start to finish, because from my own experience, once you know that, it's much, much easier to start learning about the sort of intricacies of the different grapes and the different styles, and really getting to know exactly what you like. Wine that we all know and love is made from grapes. Grapes are grown on vines, and vines are found really all over the world. They're really robust plants, and they have an amazing ability to produce fruit in a load of different climates, from Germany to Australia, from Spain to, to Chile. But what is different is the what's required to produce really, really good fruit. So light, temperature, soil, all of these things have a really important factor on the style uh, of the wine that's, be, that's able to be produced. The grapes that are grown here are Chardonnay grapes. Now that's because they're a very specific set of factors that are available here in the south of England. The temperature's generally quite cold. There's a lot of rain. The winters are cold and light's restrictive, it's very, it very cloudy. The particular variety of grapes is one of the key ways that you can make different styles of wine. And you'll see this generally on a lot of labels, particularly from sort of new world countries. So South Africa, Australia, South America, the, the grape variety generally is on the label. So think of your Chardonnays, your Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and this will have a fundamental effect on the style of the wine that is produced. Clearly, a Chardonnay is gonna taste very different to a Cabernet Sauvignon grape. So the grape that winemakers pick is gonna have a really big impact on the overall style of wine. The vines themselves can last several decades, and once they're planted, it takes a few years before the fruit is good enough to be able to turn into wine. So it takes quite a lot of forward planning. The vines themselves go through an annual cycle of grape growing. In the winter, the vines are chopped back and trimmed or pruned, um, leaving just the stem or the base of the vine um, available. The vines are dormant through the winter months, so there's no grape growing at all. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, really between sort of October through to March. In the spring, the new shoots will start to appear on the existing bit of wood that still remains from the year before. That's a process called bud burst, and it's a really crucial part of the winemaking process, especially in the northern, you know, the northern part of the northern hemisphere, so England, northern France, Germany. Frost can be a real issue, and if those buds are damaged by the frost, it can ruin the whole harvest. Here at Ridgeview, they use effectively giant candles to ward off the cold air. Steeper hills are also really useful during this time of year because the cold falls down the hill, so the vines at the top of the hill are protected. During the summer, the leafy canopy and the fruit starts to appear. Really during this period, the grapes and the vines start to look after themselves. They do require maintenance, so ongoing pruning to make sure that the vines are getting the right amount of water, the right amount of light, and the right amount of heat. The autumn is really where the magic happens. So the grapes grow through, go through a process called veration, which is where they really start to ripen, and they get that really deep, rich color. So if it's black grapes, they start to turn that really lovely purple color, and if they're white grapes, they go that sort of golden, creamy color. We then start to have to think about the harvest, Again, another really crucial part. Ultimately, that's when the fruit um, is, is taken from the vines and taken to the winery. The exact time depends on a number of factors, so exactly where in the world you are, the temperatures, the amount of rainfall, and the sort of the sugar levels and the acidity within the grapes themselves. The winemakers will be out regularly checking the grapes, testing them, taking them into the lab and just making sure they are absolutely perfect for winemaking. When they give the green light, people are out in droves to pick them. I mean, there's a couple of different ways. So here at Ridgeview, they use uh, hand harvesting. So lots of people cutting whole buds from the stems, but I guess a much more sort of common method used around the world is machine harvesting, where big sort of tractor looking things straddle the rows of the vines and shake the grapes off collect them and then take them to the winery. And that is where we'll continue.
Now we've got all the raw fruit, we need to turn it into that product that we all know and love. This process varies depending on the style of wine that the winemaker's after, the grape, whether it's sparkling wine, red, white, you know, sweet wine. The process varies massively. Believe it or not, the juice from both red and white grapes is actually clear. It's the contact with the skins whilst the, the, the wine is macerating and fermenting that gives it that really, that gives red wine that really, really rich color. During this sort of process as well, often the, the stalks and sort of the non grape matter is removed and, and picked out and that again will vary based on the scale of the operation so those sort of finer wines are going to be much more selective about the, the grapes and the sort of matter that's going into the wine itself. The second sort of significant stage to this process is fermentation and actually this is the sort of same process as is with beer and a lot of other alcoholic drinks will go through some form of fermentation. Fermentation is the process whereby yeast converts sugar into carbon dioxide, heat, and most importantly, alcohol. Yeast is a live product, and it will basically sit in with the wine. There'll be some sort of residual yeast already in uh, the grapes, um, but cultured yeast is added, which then Go, starts that whole process. This process can take up to about three weeks and it requires quite a lot of management by the, the winemakers just to control the temperatures. You know, you see the big tanks, a lot of those are all temperature controlled, um, particularly with red wines as well. The skins are left in the tanks while it's fermenting and they can, you know, cause a, a plug at the top. So that needs to be moved and basically circulated to, to make sure that those flavors are able to build and grow. Once the winemakers have got a usable alcoholic wine they'll deploy a number of different processes to turn it into that end product whether that's aging or whether it's um, blending filtering there's lots of different things that will allow the winemaker to bring out specific characteristics that they're looking for they'll also be looking to get some level of consistency and style so it links to the other wines that they have produced in the past all the other wines that they produce in that range here at ridgeview because they're making sparkling wine they have to do a secondary fermentation where the wine is bottled, yeast is then added and there is a secondary fermentation. The bottles are sealed and as I mentioned earlier, with in fermentation one of the byproducts is carbon dioxide. This has nowhere to go, so reabsorbs into the wine and that's what gives it the fizz and the pop. The final stage of the process is sort of the finishing and the packaging. Glass bottles are still the number one way of storing wine. Cork is the sort of most classic um, closing for bottle of wine, but more recently screw caps have become much, much more popular with winemakers. This is because they allow no oxygen into the bottle, which really protects it, but also they're cheap, easy, and they make it a lot more approachable for the end consumer. Once the bottles are, are sealed and labeled, they're ready to be distributed all over the world for enjoyment in your home, in a restaurant or bar. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you found the video useful. Uh, if you want to find out more about English wine, here's a link to a video I made that explores the category as a whole and see you on the next one.